straight to the show. Finchie, appreciate you coming on, mate, for Retro Round. Pleasure, mate. Talk about that eventful era, the 70s, rugby league. Yeah, it was very eventful. Yeah. Um, a lot of good things happened to me uh, in the 70s, so yeah. uh, it was fond memories. Mate, um, now, if we go, you're a Maitland boy. You went on the 1972-73 Australian Schoolboys. Yep. Uh, Roy Masters was the coach. That's right. And uh, after that, you signed at the Dragons. I just ask you about St George in those days when you go there. I mean, that, that not long you know, before that, they win their historic 11 comps in a row. Um, what was the culture like there? Well, Matty, the, the first day I turned up for training, um, I was a little 17-year-old. Um, so strolling in there and all these, you know, icons are there. Yeah. Um, no one had to say anything. You just you could just feel yeah. what was expected. You yeah. had to aim up and you had to earn your stripes. Um, so a lot of a lot of senior blokes wouldn't talk to you until till they'd seen how you how you went. Prove yourself off the park as well as on. Mm. Um, and once you'd done that, yeah. um, you were part of the team. But until you did that, you were sort of. Well, you're still a boy in 90, the 75 grand final. Yep. You're on the bench. You're just yep. a young bloke, teenager yep. still. And that was one of the most infamous grand finals ever. East beat you blokes 38-0, but it's most famous for uh, Graham Lenglands, the captain and coach at the time, the white boots, had the pain-killing injection before the game, which rendered, he just couldn't run. Um, did you see him in the sheds getting the pain-killing injection? Yeah, well, look, it was well known that Chang was struggling with a groin, yep. groin issue. And, um, yes, obviously... Everyone knew what was going on. Mm. Um, we didn't know the repercussions of what was going to happen, um, especially in that first half. Um, Chang sort of lost control of his of his of his leg, yeah. so to speak. And uh, just before half time, the then uh, boss of St George, Frank Facer, the great administrator from St George, Frank Facer, uh, he came to me and said, "Look, I'm getting Chang off. You're going on." Mm. And so, as a young 18 year old, I start getting the, the gear off and getting ready to go. Well, mm. when, when Chang come off and there was a discussion, Chang wouldn't, wouldn't, come, wouldn't off. come off. So as a young 18-year-old, I'm putting, putting it on, putting the tracksuit on, taking it, it off, it putting off. it on. Okay. In the end, I skulked down to the back and just yeah, right. let, let it roll. And, and look, I, I probably think to this day that half-time probably related to 38 points a second. I think we're down 5 nil at half-time. Tell me, uh, in the sheds, with so many great players... Off, you know, a, a team with such great expectation. What does the shed look like after 38-0? That, that that loss and, and the nature of the loss and what went. Oh, on? it was it was it wasn't a pretty place. Obviously, 38-0 uh, for a great club like St George, mm. who had beaten the Roosters in the major semi-final to go straight through. Yeah. Uh, in a tough affair. Um, looking back, that side, mm. the Roosters side, was an outstanding football team. Yeah. Um, but in saying that, we we, yeah. we beat them in the major semi, and we thought we were a real shit a show at uh, yeah. winning the grand final. But uh, yeah. as, it, as it panned out, you know. Let's talk about happier times. 77 grand final. Now, you, nine all in, in grand final day, rather than extra time back in those days, see you in seven days. You have to come back a week later. Where you just win 22 nil. But how difficult were, was it for you blokes against Paramount to get yourself up again? No, no. We, we, yeah. we, 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 actually, we will call Bath Babes. We had a really young football team. Yeah. Um, and that's why, obviously, we call Bath Babes. So our recovery was, was fine. We, we had a barbecue the next day. On the Sunday, we had a few beers together, mm. the, the, the players and the family. Um, and really, we were fine. We, we may be back to training next week and well, you went. we're ready to roll. Tell me about Harry Bath, the coach. Yeah, one, one of the great coaches in my mind. I think he, uh, he influenced, uh, at that time, how the game was played. Mm. Uh, Harry was a... a Played with St George, but went and played a lot of football in Warrington in England. And uh, when he did come back to coach St George, the way he uh, the way he coached, he started to, to to introduce how players would create space by using the ball and the lines you ran. Yeah, right. Uh, so he introduced that into the, the Dragons, and obviously we had a really good pack of forwards with Craig Young and Rod mm. Reddy and Steve Edge and Brucey Starkey and others. What about uh, that, what about those blokes? There's so many great players. Who was the leader? Oh, look, I, th I think the, the leader uh, of the team at that time was Edgy. Edgy yep. was the captain, and he was yep. probably a little bit older than us, so he kept us in check. Mm. Um, but, but in saying that, we had a bloke at the back called Teddy Goodwin, who was, was probably as Genius. good as any player you, yeah. you could see. Uh, scored a great try in that 77 first game. Uh, Rod Reddy, who, was, who would mix it with most. Um, mm. uh, Craig Young, uh, yeah. tough man. Um, mm. So we had a really strong footy team. How much fun was football in the 70s, Finchie? 
Um, it was great fun. Mm. It was great fun. I think you, you experienced a bit of it. Um, mm. uh, we, we, we train hard because we had to work as well. Mm. Uh, we'd play hard, mm. but we'd also have a, have a few beers mm. um, to enjoy each other's company. Was that um, compulsory after training? Did everyone go to the pub? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Everyone went up to the pub. Actually, on a Monday at lunchtime, there was also a, a quiet drink if you wanted to get to the Leeds Club. Um, so still to this day? Because we go uh, No, no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, not to this day. But, yeah. but the, the Monday uh, lunchtime, all the greats would come. You know, you have your Ken Carnies would turn up, and even though they weren't playing, they would still mix, mix yeah, right. with, with the new new era. Yeah. Um, and and we, as I said, we, we'd train hard, but we'd also go and have a couple of beers. We wouldn't go silly, but yeah. we'd just have a couple of beers. And, yeah. But that built a great culture and a great camaraderie amongst that crew of that era, and it's still there today. Finchy, um, what about, um, like, being a professional footballer and, and the pressure of the country that, and having a nine-to-five job? What, what did you do for a job back in those uh, days? I was, a, I was a plumber. I was oh, a, yeah. a, a apprentice plumber. Yeah. Um, so I had to obviously work, mm. not, uh, well it wasn't 9 to 5, it was 7 to yeah. 4 o'clock or whatever it was, and then train had to start at 5.30, so you go to Cogra and, and away you go again. And uh, yeah. we train three days a week, but you work five days a week. It's become a very, very different rugby league, you know, big business these days. What, if you don't mind me asking, what were you, say, on average, what, what would your year, yearly sal salary for St George be? Uh, me, and I wasn't probably one of the highest paid, but probably around the 15 to 20 grand a year. Yeah. And you get paid once a year. You wouldn't get paid weekly. Yeah. And one, 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 once a year was payday at the end of the year, and that was quite an event as well. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> event. Um, you win a comp again in 1979. You beat Canterbury. Yep. With a terrific side. And then, Finchie, not long after that, you quit St George and you returned to Maitland where you are captain and coach. And I remember that very well because my dad was coaching yep. Cessna. What, why? You know, because I remember you still playing at Maitland. You are a class of every, above everyone in that competition. What made you return? Yeah, look, I, I think um, at that point, St George probably had a different path they wanted to go. Mm. So it was a discussion with Harry and others, and I think the, my best move was, was to move on. Um, the issue I didn't want to... I wanted to be remembered as a one especially in, in, in Sydney, as just playing for St George. I had offers to go elsewhere, mm. but I turned them down. It's a little bit different than the modern game today where mm. there's plenty of money about. Uh, so I went back to, to where it all started at, mm. at, at, uh, at Maitland, um, which a lot of players did in those days. They yep. all went back to the bush to play yep. and put back into the, to the local community that they came from. But, uh, but in those days too, in Newcastle, you, you know, especially when I left Newcastle, initially to came to St George, you could play for your country mm. from, and play in Newcastle. You went to coaching. You, I mean, you were in the coaching staff for the first ever Newcastle Knights side to come in. And yep. I don't want to embarrass you, Finchie, but mate, you were the best coach I ever had. Mm. You know, and um, I reckon without you being my coach, I'm not here now. Might have been a surgeon. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's true. Do you were, like? And people ask me that, you know. But and I say, mate, you are the best coach. You you smart tactically, but mate, you had empathy for the player. You understood the player. Do you do you regret not going on with the coaching, Finchie? Uh, I probably do. I probably do. Um, there was an opportunity uh, when Mel really came across. Yep. Um, and I was in the frame for that, uh, yep. following David Waite's departure. Um, but obviously with Mel coming in, uh, they were looking for that profile and I went into it. The club offered me an administration role. Yep. I did a bit of coaching with Mel. Yep. But from that point on, um, I stayed in that space. I, I did a little bit of work um, yeah. in coaching in um, Canberra when I went to Canberra yep. as a head of footy. Um, it's, it's probably something I, I do regret a little bit, mm. but um, anyway, the cards are dealt. The referee's boss for eight years. Yes, Ooh. and I'll never get them back, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the pressure. Uh, the pressure in that role is unbelievable. It's, it's, a, it's a job that you can't win. It's a job where you really, oh, in my case, I looked upon it as I had an obligation to the game to ensure that the product that was put out there was mm. as best as could be. Uh, Understanding that I was given directions on 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 the rules and and, and whatever interpretations that were required. Um, what really what really um, gobsmacked me was when I took the job on. Uh, I didn't realise how far behind that part of the game was compared to to club length. Yep. How players are trained, how tr players prepared, how they reviewed, how they evaluated their performances, compared to that sector, yep. which was a long long way behind at that point yep. in time. What about your boy, Brett? Unbelievable. 330 games. How much, how much joy did he give yourself and, and Deb? Oh, look, we followed him 
pretty well everywhere. Um, from uh, he, he obviously came with us to, when we moved to Canberra. Yep. That's probably why he didn't play for the Knights, mm. because he moved away as a, as a teenager. Uh, he played junior reps for Canberra, and, uh, and Mel said to me one day, he said, oh, your son, I'd like to play him in first grade at 17. And I said, well, with all due respects, I played at 17, so I can't stop yeah. him. Yeah. Um, so he was probably one of the first, first lot of players that actually went into that full-time professional following the Super yep. League war. Um, and that's, that's obviously he never mm. never worked, I want to say worked, he did yeah. work within the footy, but he's, his career has been fantastic. We, we enjoyed every minute of it. Mm. Not only myself and Deb, but you know, Troy and, and Rebecca and their yeah. families now, they've all enjoyed yeah. it as well. Finchie, it is retro round, 70s. Yeah. A few questions about the 70s. Who was, who was the best player of the 70s, in your opinion? Best player of the 70s, in my opinion, Steve Rogers. Yeah. Uh, outstanding player. Genius. Uh, genius player. He was, he was uh, a player who, um, who had the lot. Mm. He could attack, he could defend, um, he could kick goals. Mm. Um, trying to defend him uh, was always a handful. Um, Best movie of the, 80, uh, of the 70s? Uh, probably The Godfather. It's probably The Godfather. Yeah. Best song? Uh, to me, uh, anything to do with the Eagles. You old group. But, but in saying all that, the 70s was the best time for music. OK, and finally, sum the 70s up in one word. Um, exciting. Uh, probably exciting. Uh, loose? Well, I think, as a young fellow, you always be a little bit loose, aren't you? <laughs> Enjoying a drink and, 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 and to good times with your mates. Yeah. But, but uh, look, a lot of achievements as a player. Got married, yeah. had children, all that sort of stuff as well. So a good, a good period of my life. Finchie, we're going to ask you to hang around for It Happens in Threes. Fletcher's got a few questions for you about raising Brett, yeah. some interesting ones. Yeah. Finchie, thanks for coming on tonight. No Appreciate it. <laughs>